first year of university life can be quite daunting for students, both academically and socially. It is evident from the literature that active student engagement and participation in their studies leads to enhanced academic performance and satisfaction. UCD Engineering, in a recent curriculum review, identified a number of priority areas for the early stage of the curriculum. Firstly, the provision of an active, engaging engineering experience for first-year students. Secondly, the development of active student participation and engagement. And thirdly, the development of skills, information literacy skills, independent study skills, team working skills and problem solving skills. In many institutions, the first year engineering curriculum focuses mainly on the development and understanding of scientific and mathematical principles. Students, however, have decided to study engineering and are keen to experience engineering in their first year. At UCD, we've introduced a module for first year engineering students, which addresses many of these issues. The module, Creativity and Design, is an active learning experience which challenges students to develop creative design solutions using innovation techniques and problem-solving techniques they've been introduced to. The development of creative potential, the ability to communicate design ideas, the development of information literacy skills and team working skills are central to this module. The initiative was developed in partnership with an Irish innovation consultant, Keith Finglas, Managing Director of Innovation Delivery Limited. The approach taken was very much influenced by that used by the innovation consultants IDEO and also the approach used by Stanford Design School for graduate students. Keith delivers instruction on the innovation and problem solving tools to be used and examples of their use in practice. He then directs the development of creative design solutions through the studio work. Formal instruction on visual communication representation is provided within the module by architect Mark Price. Successfully working in teams means you have to bring your own skill and add it to those of the others in the team. Um, part of the challenge about this is that we often produce graduates who are eye-shaped. They have a depth of knowledge, but they have no breadth for the, to understand the others they're working alongside. What we're trying to do with this program is produce T-shaped graduates, people who have a depth of knowledge with their own competence, but a breadth of understanding that means that they can relate to the other people that they're working with. So a finance person can understand a technologist, a technologist can understand a human factors person, and between them they can produce a pretty good result for the team. In, in industry, across the range of projects, whether it's a crisis or a large-scale multi-year program, um, it turns out that the earliest possible stages, the first 20% if you like of the project, has a disproportionate effect on the performance of the project as a whole. The better you do that first 20%, the better the results you'll get from the project. What we try and do with this program is root the base solution in the technology, business and user needs that are being addressed. And what we find is a team that successfully addresses those three areas will produce results. They'll produce results where a project will be better executed, it'll be more efficient, it'll be more cost effective, but most importantly it will actually produce results that are far more appreciated by the actual end users. A key part of the challenge facing a design team as they try to address the technical business and user issues of a project is that users don't often know how to express what the problem is they want addressed. Um, they don't know what the design team can do for them. On the design side, the team as yet don't know clearly what it is that they, they can do for the user. An approach that we teach that sits in this space helps the design team work with the user by first of all reaching a, a better level of understanding of the environment at hand, then generating ideas around what might be done and finally testing the ideas through prototyping. By repeating and iterating through these three steps, the design team and the user will generate better and better solutions. Uh, which can then be actually implemented. In industry, most work done by graduates is done as members of teams. Our goal here is to help graduates develop skills which will help them uh, contribute and eventually lead teams, um, improving the quality of the results that the teams achieve. And the exercises that I use with students are intended to give students confidence in drawing. At the age of 19 or 18, most people don't have confidence in drawing because they haven't become artists, they don't think that they're good enough. Um, so I try to show them how simple it is. I have techniques which hopefully give people confidence so that they can start exploring their ideas through drawing. And these, these drawings then become the things that other people understand their work through. And it makes their work more accessible uh, and more meaningful to people, including themselves. This module combines a series of formal lectures with studio-based project work. The lecture sessions provide instruction on the tools and examples of their use. The main focus, however, is on development and communication of ideas, team working and active use of the tools, so the studio sessions are a key element. 
Facilitating studio work for 275 first-year engineering students has required the development of a sustainable approach. Aligned with the Creativity and Design module is a module for a master's group of students who are studying a programme in structural engineering with architecture. This module is called Innovation Leadership. Through this module, students develop their facilitation skills, their leadership skills and their problem-solving skills. They are introduced to the innovation techniques and problem-solving techniques. These master's students very enthusiastically facilitate the studio project work for creativity and design with the first-year engineering students. They undertake all the assignments in advance and are responsible for running and managing the studio sessions every week, guiding groups, encouraging participation from all students, scheduling presentations, providing feedback, grading and reflecting and reporting back on the sessions each week. Adequate training and preparation of peer facilitators cannot be overemphasised. Incorporation of formal weekly reflection on activities, adequate time for discussion and planning for this group with academic support, advice and direction is an important consideration. There is a deliberate vagueness about the project briefs that students are given in the Creativity and Design module. This allows for a variety of solutions to emerge. There is no one answer. Students often find this vagueness quite difficult to deal with. The approach aims to get students thinking about user-centred design, business viability and technical feasibility of their solutions. Too often we focus exclusively on the technical feasibility and business viability domains, leaving the user out. In the studio, the first-year students work in teams of five and are distributed across four studios. Once the students are presented with the brief, they develop their understanding of the issue, in particular the user experience. Following this, they embark on the idea generation phase. Exploration of ideas is supported by rapid prototyping using simple modelling materials and sketching. Through this process, the ideas are refined, leading to the emergence of a preferred solution. With the number of projects, students are required to seek user response to their designs through interactive use of their prototypes and communication of the design concepts. Assessment is continuous across the semester as students develop and present their projects in the studio on a weekly basis. Students also submit their individual sketch work for assessment. As part of the Innovation Dublin Festival last year, we ran an exhibition of selected student project work from the first year module, Creative Solutions by First Year Students. This exhibition coincided with an assignment that students were undertaking at the time, which looked at how information technologies might assist people in Grafton Street to access information and services. It allowed us to showcase what was happening within the module to secondary school students, parents, employers and other academic institutions. Visitors to the exhibition were asked to vote on the best project at the exhibition and the first and second placed projects were awarded small monetary prizes which were sponsored by Innovation Delivery Limited and ESB. We'll continue to include the exhibition as a celebration of the creative design work that students are producing. It's fantastic for the students to be active participants in the Innovation Dublin Festival. The basis of the approach is transferable across disciplinary boundaries and provides a mechanism by which small group experience can be given to large groups of students. The UCD School of Computer Science and Informatics has used this mechanism within their programme. The students have reacted very positively to the initiative and have produced excellent work. They very much enjoy the studio environment, the interaction with their classmates and developing their confidence in presenting their ideas. I believe that it's very important to create a culture of innovation and creativity amongst both our undergraduate and graduate populations. We need to create the space for students to experiment and take risks in a controlled learning environment. It has been said that companies not nurturing creativity are leaving innovation to chance. Equally well within our education programmes, we must develop creative skills and innovation skills.